Mic check one, two, mic check one, two. Okay, so welcome to Programming 101. This should be a fairly simple programming class. Shouldn't take more than six weeks. I think that all the lessons that I learned in programming school should not have taken me that long. And so I'm trying to put this lesson together so I could teach other people to program within just a few lessons just to get to the, ba the basics. So um, one of the things you have to do with programming is um, think through the possibilities. People think that programming is merely uh, you get in front of the computer and you start typing a bunch of code. Um, that's usually not the case. A lot of the programming is logic and you have to think through a lot of logic. So uh, let's start with some thinking assignments. So we're going to start with the date function. And the date function is a means of doing something with a date. So in this case, what I'd like to do with the date is to be able to take any given date and add one date to it. So that the purpose of this particular date function is to add one day to any given date. Okay. Uh, to any given date. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to go through the steps that it would take to accomplish this task. So you could say um, you're going to have a given date. So the user is going to provide a date. So we're going to call that user input. User input date. Uh, uh, date is probably going to be in a certain format. So you could say in the format uh, month like that, day and year. Let's do four digits for the year. So user is going to input this. Um, the next step would be, so once the user inputs the date, we would um, store each facility. So store, let's go with that. So we're going to store the month as month and we're going to store the date, the day of the date as date as D and we're going to store the year as uh, the way we do that is uh, simply this we'll say that the month is equal to mm let's do that and we'll say that the day is equal to dd and we'll say that the y is equal to the year So whatever the user inputs, we're going to store that. So this is the how to do it. So we're going to indent the step. So store. Let's do this. Let's store the month as month. store month as month and that will be m equal m storing the day as day would be day equals day and storing the year as year would be y so once you store the month the day and the year you have that stored and the function says well, what we really want to do is to add one day to any given date. So now that we have our day, we would add one day. So here's where the adding occurs. So you would just add one day to uh, the, day, the day variable. 
add, add the number one to day variable, which is the, the, the variable we call D. And the way we'd go, we would go about doing that is to say that the day variable D is equal to, and we'll do it like this, day variable plus one. Okay, then we would display our new date. So we go about displaying the new date. And the way we display the new date would be uh, by showing uh, the month variable which is month. Then we're going to show the new day variable. And we're going to show the year variable. And that's it. So in this step, what I'm going to show is the sample solution. Let me put that in red so we could highlight the sample solution and see what it comes up to. So, given date. So let's start with a sample. So this is our sample user input. So if this is our sample user input, we are gonna select the date of, let's go with, January 1st, 2016. So the user inputs the date in this, in this format, which is correct. We are going to now store this date. So store M as M. So this would now equal to 1. Let's put that in red so we know that this is the user input. So M because this is the month, will be equal to one mm, which is the user variable for month. And now it is stored in the dollar sign m variable. So we're gonna do the same thing for the day function. So the day function now is also equal to one. So one is equal to the day variable, which is what we said would be the user input. And that is stored now in the D variable. Uh, for the year, it's almost the same thing. It's 2016, which will populate into the user input YYY. So YYY will be stored in YYYY will be stored in Y. And that would be equal to the year 2016. So let us put that in red so we know that that is a processing value. That is what it is equal to at this stage of the process. Once we get to step five, we have to add one to the day variable. So this is D plus one. This is gonna be equal to the D value, which is one plus one, which is equal to two. So all of this is a processing variable. So the new value is two, which is equal to one plus one, which is now being stored in D. And then we could now show the new date as month, day, year. And in this case, the month is now one, the day is now two because we add one to it and stored it in d so d now is two and then the year is unchanged so that is still 2016 and that is correct so we have successfully added one day to the given date so january 1st uh, when you add one day to it should equal january 2nd and that is correct. So what we 
while this is correct it's not correct in all cases so for example let's change the user input to January 31st okay so for the moment let's get rid of our calculations here here and here and get rid of our sample solution so now we are going to try to do this again so given a user date as January 31st we have to now add one day to it so we know intuitively that the next day is going to be February 1st so let's see if we could get that date so the month will be stored in the month variable the month is still one the day will be stored in the day variable 31 under the dd variable dd is now 31 year is 2016 which is the user input yyy and we know that yyy will be stored in y so we're going to put 2016 there we're going to add one to the day according to this process. Add one to the D variable. We should actually indent this so that we know that this is how we add one to this variable. So um, adding one to the D variable will now be uh, equal to 31 plus, uh, let's do it again equal to 31 plus 1 which is equal to 32 so at this point d is equal to 32 and when you go to display the due date uh, showing month day year the sample solution will be 1 slash 32 slash 2016 which we know is not correct okay the date that we're looking for is February 1st so how do we fix that well there's several ways to fix it and you could choose how you want to fix it you could decide not to add one to this date when you recognize that it's 31 or you could simply add one and then make the corrections after the mistake has occurred. So let's try to do that. Okay, so we could come here and go back to our next step. And once we have this step that says we've added it, we should validate, uh, validate. And validating is a process in coding that um, is very, very common. So we'll validate the date. So in this case, we'll say if, if the D variable is somehow greater than 31, because we know January should have no more than 31 uh, days, then we are going to do the following. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, add one to the month. We're going to, uh, for, 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 first of all, the day variable is going to be reset. So we're going to set the day variable equal one. And we are going to increase the month by one. So it'd be month is equal to uh, month, month plus one. All right, so those two things should happen if after you add one to the date, you try to validate it and it's over the uh, allotted value. So let's go through our steps once again and see what the um, uh, display new date function should would say at this time. So let's try this. Okay, we're going to go back to our sample date. Our sample date now is still January 31st. So we've added one to the month. We've added one to the day. We've added, uh, sorry, the day equal 31st. And the year has been stored to the variable Y. We've added one to the day. Day is equal to one plus one, 31 plus one. 
that gives the day value of 32 right there we now could uh, start the validation process so if D is greater than 31 uh, let's check this out so let me do it this way so what we'll do here is put this in red again so we know that this is our code that's code processing so basically if 32 basically what this is saying that if the new value of D which we know is now 32 after you added one is greater than uh, this value here which is 31 we know because that's the number of months in January if 32 is greater than 31 then you do the following and since this is true since this is true we're going to do the following we're going to set d equal 1 so at this point the the processing let's just process that the value of d is 1 and then we're going to do month plus 1 so what this equals to is the month that we stored here which is 1 as you can see so that would be 1 plus this value here which is also 1 and that will leave us with 2 so let's put this in red so we can see that this is part of our processing as well and we're going to display the new date showing month day year and at this point the values are let's see what the sample solution values are uh, what is the what is the month the month we know is now 2 since 1 plus 1 is now 2 so the month is 2 the day we know that the day was reset here to be equal to 1 so the day is now 1 in the year was never changed the year was still this this y value here is still this y value here so that becomes 2016 so let's see if our solution for this particular example is true is correct so the user input was january 31st 2016 and now we added one day to it and we followed the simple steps we laid out here and we came up with the date of February 1st, 2016, which is very good for the process because that is exactly what you wanted. But again, this doesn't solve all the issues that we have. So for example, let me give you another date. Let's, let's try April 30th. Let's try April 30th. So we're going to add one day to April 30th. Okay. And let's erase all of these processing variables. Okay. I'm going to erase all of these processing. Uh, come on we should erase this and we should erase this okay and we're gonna erase this so here we go so our new user input date is April 30th 2016 we're gonna save these values as month day 30th and year as 2016 perfect we're going to move on to step six which is adding one to the day uh, day equals d plus one so that's equal the day is 30 we're going to add one to that and that will be equal to 31 so we're going to come down here and we're going to validate and we're going to say if the day is greater than 31 do the following 
if the day is greater than 31 we're going to do this we, so we looked at this the day value let's do this again so that we know that we're processing so at this point when your when your code is is being executed it says if d is greater than 31 so d is now what's the value of d right now 30 which is the original date plus one day is equal to 31 so it's, it's 31 greater than 31 and the answer is no so therefore this does not happen and this does not execute so what does it mean here when this says d equal one this does not happen so the value of d remains 31 so we could actually just put that in so we know because this part is actually not changing the value of d because this if this fails then none of this happens so when this says month plus one this is also not gonna not gonna happen so the month stays the same and we know the month value is four so this still stays the same so none of this changes and then we display the new date so the sample solution for this particular given user input date of april 30th would be four for the month which we know is four the day we added one to it would be 31 31 and the year that we added to would be 2016 2016 so when we add one to april 30th we get april 31st 2016 the problem with this date is that it's it is incorrect because if you look at the month of april the month of april only has 30 days and according to our steps here according to these steps um, there is something missing in these steps that's allowing us to not come up with the correct date so this is the challenge for this assignment is that you as the student will have to list the steps that will correctly account for every given day of the year so what you've seen so far is that not all the days are going to give you challenges most of the time the challenges are going to come from the dates at the end of the month april 30th january 31st december 31st is also uh, a very challenging day because december 31st is one of the only days that if you add one day to it it's going to change not only the day the month but it's also going to change the year so all of those effects would have to be uh, addressed by you um, there are <coughs> there's also leap years that affect the month of february so february could have 28 days or it could have 29 days so a date of february 28 2016 uh, depending on if it's a leap year or not which this year happened to be a leap year um, would have would be allowed to have an extra day to go to 29 but if it was not a leap year, let's say last year, 2015, when you add one to this date, it should give you uh, March 1st. So within your steps, you would have to have uh, in the validating section, uh, if date equals 31st, or if month equals February, or if year equal leap year, or whatever you think is necessary to validate your date before uh, showing the sample solution is what you need to do and highlight those steps in order to come up with the correct date. I hope this helps in this assignment. It's really something that we take for granted that we do automatically. I could give you any given date in the year and you would just automatically give me the new date. 
but when you start writing out the steps logically that it takes to do that you see the relationship between the different variables of month day and year and so on so uh, try it see how far you get and then check the next video for the solution okay i'll see you guys in the next video thank you